Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central, and welcome to some never before seen gameplay of the Interceptor with the mission Lost Arcanist. This is going to be one of the many videos that I managed to capture and record from the Stockholm trip that we went on. But speaking of which, big shout out to EA, they were the ones that flew me out, sorted out my hotel and looked after me over the couple of days that I was in Stockholm, playing Anthem from the DICE Studios. It was a lot of fun and as I said there's going to be a lot of gameplay from that event. I could go over roughly what to expect, but to make sure that you don't miss those videos, do subscribe to the channel. Some amazing gameplay that I'm so excited to show you guys. And you should expect to see the rest of the gameplay videos sometime soon. Not to mention lots of news going on at the moment, so if you don't want to miss anything to do with Anthem, then do subscribe. Before we go any further, I did want to talk about the abilities that I had on this Interceptor build. The first of which is the Plasma Star, which I'm showing off, just throwing it at the ground. You have four in total, you can throw them all in quick succession. The drop-off range is pretty ridiculous, but as you see in, if you throw out three, for example, they don't come off cooldown one by one. You have to wait until you have all four stocked up again before you can use them. Then you have the Venom Bomb, which again is fairly self-explanatory. Does damage over time to alive enemies, doesn't do any damage to turrets or robots of any kind. Explodes on impact and is pretty good. As I said, this is the Lost Arcanist mission, which you may recognize if you saw the Anthem livestream way back from the Paris Games Week, but it has changed a little bit since then. It does give me an opportunity to talk about some of the content coming out on this channel and basically what I had the opportunity to play. We played the game from level one and I got to about level six in the seven to eight hours that I played, some of the time that, you know, we went on lunch break and stuff like that. There will be a couple of missions that we will be able to show you on the channel, one of which being this one, as well as some bits and pieces with free roam later on too. I played the Interceptor as you've seen, and I do really want to do another video going over the specifics, some of the abilities that I got to use, and the general impressions from that class. But in this video, I really wanted to answer some key questions, I suppose, that the community have had to do with stuff like how the game plays with mouse and keyboard, the aspect of playing on your own, because I played all of this basically on my own. You can blame Willis Gaming for that, he effectively left me behind. But if you do have any questions in the comments, then do ask me there. There's some stuff that I can't really talk about just yet, and there's also stuff that I just don't know. So if I don't answer a question, it's not necessarily because I can't talk about it, it's just that I don't have a clue. This isn't the final version of the game, that's also worth noting. The game is still in development, so stuff that you may see here is subject to change, of course. But I do want to talk about gameplay first. I think every other bit of gameplay that we've seen from Anthem has been played on a controller and I played all of this on mouse and keyboard and it felt really good. Using weapons and the sensitivity there was a lot easier to use, easier to manage. It was really easy to set up my sensitivity that I've had for other games in Anthem and it felt really good to be able to do that, both when it came to aiming at hip and also ADS2. Flying was surprisingly really good in this. I don't know if you can see it on screen, but there's a little circle reticle which acts as a good way to guide you along and make sure that you it's almost like a spirit level, right? That you can see exactly where you're flying ahead. You're flying straight across. You're not going just a little bit up or a little bit down or a little bit to the left or right. You know exactly where you're going. And because of that, it acts as a really good guide and it helps you know how much in control you are in flying. And because of that, it's really easy to get around. And it feels really good to be able to jump and dash and fly to certain areas in one fluid movement. I was really sort of scared that Anthem would be a case of fly to one place, kill everybody there, fly to another place, kill everybody there. And it feeling really disconnected but because flying is such an integral part of the game it's integrated in such a nice way that it's very fluid you can fly around find a place that you can fight from a distance or say for example some of the gameplay that I have of the interceptor was running a shotgun you want to be dashing and flying into certain targets to get in close the game sounded great the sounds of the game were awesome the music was played all of the abilities sounded impactful and all of the voiceover work was to a T we'll talk about characters in a second but there's a really nice hot tempo to the gameplay as you're seeing in the background especially playing something like an interceptor where you're constantly having to move around be agile be quick i don't know what it'd be like to play on the colossus because once you pick a javelin in this iteration at least you're kind of stuck with it so we only have the gameplay of the interceptor from now on but we will talk to people that played the colossus in the storm on this channel to get their perspectives of those heroes this gameplay was also on hard difficulty but it didn't feel that hard it was still quite challenging but i was sort of expected a bit more but that said the game is still in development so they might tune that up a little bit and it seems from what the devs have said on twitter and stuff that the game on hard and grandmaster difficulty is actually really hard it might also be because it's very early on in the game and i'm also playing on my own that it just might be a lot easier because the difficulty does scale up slightly at least when you're grouped up with two 
three or four people, the more people that you have, the harder it would be. Speaking of which, I did say I played on my own. There was a lot of concern on Anthem, especially being a game that you can play solo. I had a whale of a time playing on my own, and I don't often bode well playing games on my own, so I had a lot of fun being able to do stuff. It was quite relaxing almost to fly through the world. Doing missions and contracts and stuff on your own, you can do that. You can match make with other people if you wanted, but I just sort of stuck on my own. And when you go into free play, as has been pointed out in the past, there will be other people in your free play flying around, but that doesn't inherently mean that you have to do stuff with them. You could go off and do your own thing, they could go off and do theirs. It doesn't feel that because they're in the same world and instance as you, that you suddenly now need to work together to do stuff. It is kind of cool when you see a boss in the world and you're fighting, you see the other people playing on your server coming along to help, that's a pretty awesome feeling. We of course know that strongholds require four players, but when you're playing on your own, you can do that and it feels perfectly fine. I did definitely want to make that clear as well as mouse and keyboard feeling awesome. Another tidbit is that you can run in Fort Tarsis. There won't be, unfortunately, any gameplay of Fort Tarsis or the Forge, but I was able to use all of it, set up certain builds as we get on to higher levels of the Interceptor, but this is fairly early on in the game, so I only have the vanilla abilities that I showed you. Now, I really want to quickly talk about the lore in the game. Uh, a lot of concerns from both sides, right? That there's some players that um, are expecting, because it's a loot shooter game, that there's not going to be a lot of lore and story, or vice versa, loot shooter fans seeing it by when thinking that it's going to be all about story and it's going to be incredibly in your face. Well, it's right in the middle. It's a really nice balance. The story wasn't too invasive or in your face at all. If you're not interested in lore, you can skip cutscenes. Any conversations that require you to put in an input, such as yes or no, that you typically see in Bioware games anyway, are all optional, I believe. I'm not too sure on that. But if you are interested in lore, then talk to people in Fort Tarsis. You can have conversations with them. But if you're not interested, you don't need to talk to them at all. You know what I mean? Just talk to the people for the main quests and the contracts. The reputations in the game and the characters are introduced and established in amazing fashion, to be fair. No character that you encounter feels ultimately pointless. They each have their characteristics, their flaws, their aspirations. And some of these characters are instantly unlikable from my perspective, but I would understand that the community might love them. Owen, for example, is definitely a fan favourite already, but he's incredibly pantomime which I get will put a lot of people off of him. But I know that a lot of people still like his mannerisms in how Jack Delady seems to be, but it just means by way I've done a really good job at creating characters. As I said, nobody feels pointless, all of the characters seem to have a purpose in the game. Also, there's some really kick-ass cutscenes and story developments which I can't talk about, but even if I could, I won't spoil it. You gotta experience it for yourself. And as I said, I predominantly played the Interceptor. There's loads I want to talk about with the Interceptor, the abilities that I use, the builds that I can see happening. And as I said, I want to talk to other people about the Colossus and the Ranger. So I've already been speaking for quite a lot. I do want to let this mission and gameplay play out. But if you do have any questions that I can answer about the gameplay, the solo play, the lore, of course, I was level like four at this point. I never got to experience endgame. So if you do have any questions that I can answer, put them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I wouldn't have been able to go to Sweden to try out this game earlier if it wasn't for your guys support so i appreciate you all i love you very much and i can't wait for you to see the rest of the gameplay coming out of stockholm so make sure that you subscribe to not miss it and i'll see you guys very soon take care What needs to happen? Get me into the access panel, I'll do the rest. Okay, done. 
done. Starting repairs. Oh, and that doesn't look like a repair. Will you just let me? Oh, damn it. Hang on, we've got company. Can it be fixed? Yes, of course. Just deal with the scars, I'll figure it out. Patch him if I is through. I'm calling anyone in the area. I need help. There are scars everywhere. Nicholas, Matthias, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank goodness. There's no time. I'm hiding, but the scars are searching. I, I can see them. You must hurry. Just hang on. We're coming. The first managed all these stairs to get up here with an army of scars at your heels. Great things are possible, I guess.
Life's taken care of. Now let's see to those scars. You got it. their numbers if needed.
think he's done. Yes, he is done. <laughs> Let's clean up the rest of them now, shall we? No active signals. I'll keep monitoring. You should check on Matthias. Matthias? Here, right here. These scars. I don't know what to think. Arcanists and scars often clash over shaper sites, but nothing like this. I must tell Tazen. Please. I need to return to Fort Tarsus.